What is up guys, JBanks here, and uh, in this video I'll be mainly talking about the Rogue spec and pretty much uh, all you need to know. So uh, the best way I feel to start with any class is Boons, because Boons is one of the most important things in the game to really go over. So let's start with that. Alright, so... Gonna go to Elemental Evil, first boon, first uh, campaign you should complete. So we'll start with the first tier. Um, it offers Unsaleable Tide and Wave of Force. Uh, you gain 300 defense, 2000 hit points. You gain 300 power, 2000 hit points. You guys should already know uh, what you should take. You're gonna be taking that 300 power for extra damage. Uh, what tier two offers is Heart of Stone. You gain 4% life steal, severity, and 2,000 maximum hit points. Or you gain one, you gain 400 regeneration, 2,000 maximum hit points with Earth's Renewal. I went with Earth's Renewal. Uh, you gain 4,000 critical, 400 critical strike, and 2,000 maximum hit points with Searing Aggression. And you have to offer with Blazing Resilience. You gain 400 recovery and 2,000 maximum hit points. Um, my, in my opinion, I'm with the critical strike. Uh, I don't really go recovery, so yeah, I go regen. I go regen. Um, Gale Retribution. When taking damage, you have a chance to heal up to 24,000 hit points over a few seconds. After this effect ends, your critical strike is increased by 1,000. Uh, the other effect is the recovery, but I went with critical strike because you know, why if you pass up free bonus damage? Next is the Maze Engine. Uh, it has to offer in the first tier Abyssal Siphoning and Abyssal Regeneration. I will go with Incoming Healing Bonus. I don't really go with Life Steal. Um, it has to offer in its tier two, Demonic Influence and Demonic Resilience. Demonic Influence is 400 Combat Advantage and the, where Demonic Resilience gives is Control Effects. Will now have 5% shorter durations when you when apply to you. Um, to be honest with you, it all depends on your playstyle. Uh, if you want more damage, you would want to go with Demonic Influence. If you're really wanting to get, you know, get those CCs, you know, minimized to little of anything, then go with Demonic Resilience. Um, here's the thing, guys, which I'll, I'll explain to you guys. Damage is damage, right? But being able to not be CC'd 24-7, or even when you have an Elven Battle Enchant, this can make it where stuns don't even matter to you anymore. So, in my opinion, I would go with the shorter, the shorter durations because you can stack it with other campaigns, which I'll show you later. So I would go with Demonic Resilience, if I had it. <laughs> um, you now gain action points 3% faster, or your stamina regenerates 10% faster in combat. Um, personally, I'll, I would go with the action points, not the regeneration. Your stamina, you know, yeah, you know, I, I get it. Your stamina makes you roll. I would go with action points because you can also stack this with campaigns. And having your, you know, your dailies off of cooldown, especially when you're going against those range targets, so you can get those those breakers off on them to slow them down, to so slow uh, their movement speed. It can make a duel crazy if you're able to get those off really, really quickly. So I would stack action point gain. All right, uh, for this for this tier, I will go dis displace fate. This is really good, and this actually kind of kind of works as like a last result. Um, when you below 30% health, you gain a shield increasing damage resistance by 60% for three seconds. So basically, this this is really good. This is like you like you're on your last leg, and uh, you would die. This would probably this would probably this is gonna you know brain down your damage you're taking by more than 50 percent so it's cutting your the damage you're taking more than half so i would definitely go with this to keep yourself up because at the end of the day pv in pvp survivability is very important um tyranny of dragons i'm not really going to get into kill strongholds uh i really don't know how those work and i don't really want to get into them because it looks like it's going to be a long ass video so i'll just i'll just skip it <sighs> tyranny of dragons uh campaign I would go at 400 power, not hit points. I, I would go with power. 
Critical strike or deflect? I'll go to critical strike. Don't spec deflect, people. I'll, I'll actually tell you why before people go crazy. If you spec deflect, you're stupid. Reason why, you have an ability that gives you 100% deflect. And that ability is impossible to catch. If you use impossible to catch, it gives you 100% deflect for like, what, four seconds? Four or five seconds if it's max defense spot. So why would you need a high deflection chance? That's just wasting stats that you can put in somewhere else. So don't go into deflection, go into critical strike. When I go into detail in the next video about uh, mounts and stuff and how they synergize with your, with your uh, with abilities with the rogue, you'll understand why deflection is really important though. But I wouldn't spec it actually in, in stats. I would actually just let uh, possible to catch do its work with that. Um, next on the third tier is armor penetration. You want to take that over defense. Um, you want to take rate region over lifesteal rating. You would want to take this critical uh, severity, which is 8%, which is a big deal. All right. Underdark, these are pointless because, well, these are just for demons. So the four tiers is what you want to use for PvP. All right, for uh, the first tier, it's 400 defense, 400 power. You want to go with the power. You want to go with the critical strike here. Uh, I mean, I'm just going over this quickly because, you know, it should be cookie cutter. It should be easy to realize. Common advantage does bonus damage. You want to take this over the regeneration. I know I said, you know, you're specking region, but I would, I would still take 10% bonus damage. That's insane. Uh, now regain stamina 5% faster uh, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know why I spec this. I probably in a rush I'll just respec it later go for uh, the 5% shorter. Don't go for stamina Don't go for stamina gain because you get enough stamina regain when you're doing shadow of demise, which I'll talk about later All right, uh, next we have Icewind Dale uh, You want to go for that uh, combat advantage bonus you want to go for uh, that stamina regain here because uh, 400 incoming healing bonus that it's not really going to do much for you to be honest with you you're going to be you're going to be healing yourself up with those boons so you don't really need any healing bonuses um two percent crit critical severity for that stacking that crit severity up um you're gonna sorry you're gonna go ahead and go for uh cool resolve you gain up to 2000 power based on how much stamina or guard you are missing this is really good so basically, if you were, you know, you're low on stamina or something like that, it, you, you just get bonus damage for basically doing nothing. So I will go with cool resolve. And this is really cool. It's Winter's Bounty. Chance to gain 10% action points when killing a target. This is insane. I would do this because this coupled with what you're getting with the uh, actually, you know, specking to, you know, those boons that give you 3%, you know, uh, more action points over time. This is going to synergize really well with it. And I would spec this. So Winner's Bounty is the way to go. Dreadering, uh, you have the first tier. Go for the 250 power, don't go for the critical strike. I'll tell you why later on when I go over the stat builds, probably in the third video in this series. Uh, you are gonna go for the region, like I said, you're going to region build. 3% uh, 3, 3 uh, deflect chance, or uh, 3% resistance ignored. This is basically, basically armor penetration. You wanna go for bit and piercing. So if, you know, don't really go off of what I'm showing you, going off what I'm telling you. This would work better. It's 3% resistance ignored, meaning that it's armor penetration. All right, um, you want to take this. When taking damage, you have a chance to heal up to oh, up to 20,000 hit points over a few seconds. After this effect ends, you have you gain uh, 4,000 more defense for 10 seconds. For this, it's when dealing damage, you have a chance to deal up to 20,000 necrotic damage over a few seconds. After this effect ends, the target receives 25% less healing from spells for 10 seconds. All right, now this is the thing. Both of these are really good, as you can tell, and I'll go over why they're really good, and you can go either way with this. Okay, this is really good if you're doing BGs or if you're fighting someone that, that is, is boon heavy. They'll have a lot of heals. That will decrease all heals that they take by 25%. So this is really good for going against people that are actually boon heavy just like you. Um, or you can get that extra defense, uh, so it, which will make you more tanky. So if, you're going, if you want that more, more damage towards them to stop them from healing, you would go for this. If you want to make sure that you're safe, you're topped off, and you're good at all times, you would go with Enraged Growth. Rampaging Madness. This is insane. Um, when you deal damage, you gain a stack of madness. When you reach 50 stacks of madness, you gain 4,000 power. 
4,000 life steal and 4,000 regeneration for 10 seconds. After gaining this, this bonus, your stacks are reset. Uh, so basically you can only get one stack every second, but while you're hitting a target, you're gonna keep gaining stats. Um, this is crazy. 4,000 power is insane. You're gonna be doing crazy numbers. So make sure you're always on your target so you can get those stacks off. Uh, Sharandar, first tier, it gives 400 power on this one, 400 defense, you're gonna go for the power. You're gonna go for the critical strike here. Action point gain, like I said, keep those, uh, go ahead and stack those action points so you can uh, take advantage of, you know, getting that action points really, really fast, dude. Because uh, it all depends on, you know, how how much can you use your, your will, your courage breaker to slow those guys down. Or, you know, oh, he's low health, I can finish him off. Because there's so many times in the duel where you just don't have enough action points, this is gonna fix that. If you feel like, oh, if I just had a shocking execution, to fit, I could I could finish this guy, you know? This is gonna help you. This is gonna keep your, this is gonna keep your damage very sustainable and you're gonna have some really nice, just regular damage and your damage is gonna just go all the way through. You're not gonna just be so bursty, but you're just gonna have constant damage on your target. So this is gonna help you with that. So when being struck by a foe, you have a chance to heal up to, to yourself up to 20,000 hit points. Always take this, never take the damage because you would rather heal than die. 20,000 damage is, is shit. 20,000 hit points is your life. Always remember that guys. Elven Resolve. Um, it's your stamina regenerates 10% faster in combat. So you would take this. Uh, this is garbage. 3,000 damage isn't gonna do much. Um, when you kill a foe, you gain 135 power for 45 seconds. Now you might be saying, Mr. J Banks, why wouldn't you spec this? I'll be honest with you guys. Here's the thing, if you go, which people don't realize, a lot of times in PvP, if you're battleground heavy, which you're gonna to be to be able to take advantage of this, you, you wouldn't be an Icewind Dale taking advantage of this. Everybody knows that, you just wouldn't be. You would, you would wanna use this in Battlegrounds. This is a Battleground boom. Cause you have to kill a lot of multiple targets. In Battlegrounds, it is never certain if you're going to get the kill. There's always kill stealers. So you never wanna be like, oh my God, I have 10 seconds left to get the stack. You just wanna focus on getting the job done and this is gonna break your focus. This is not a reliable boon. So I wouldn't waste a boon slot on it. I would go with Elven Resolve where you're just getting that extra stamina, always being able to dodge roll more, and uh, go, do, go ahead and dodge all those attacks coming towards you. Um, last boon, last boon campaign. Um, for the first tier, Legion's Valor, 250 power, 250 critical strike, you wanna pick that up. Vanguard's Resolve, players who strike you grant you 400 power for eight seconds. Each foe can only add 400. 2,000 is the max. So basically, if five people are attacking you, they're gonna give you 2,000 power. Um, this is good for if you're fighting multiple targets by yourself, or if you're in team fights. This is really good regardless, so spec it, because it's really freaking good. All right, now all of these are excellent, but to be honest with you, I would go with Versatile Warrior, or I would go with, where is it? Uh, or I'll go at Unbroken Line. If you're looking for that damage, it's I, I will go for the Tower Warrior. You gain 400 power and 400 recovery whenever an ally or enemy is within 20 feet of you while flagged for PvP. Meaning, if you don't have people by you, if you don't have uh, an enemy by you, you can rely on a ally being by you. So basically, if anyone is by you, you're gonna get 400 power. I don't think this stacks. If it doesn't say it stacks, then it doesn't stack, guys. All right, guys. So that's the end of the video. If you guys have any questions about anything, go ahead and contact me. Uh, put it in the comments for contacts. I don't know why I would say that. Yeah, so put uh, your questions in the comments if you have any questions about anything, and I'll get back to them as fast as possible. Uh, next video is going to be on mounts and how they synergize with your abilities and your spec. Uh, so until then, see you guys later. As always, Jerings 23 is out. Till next time.